Hey guys, what's going on? Today's project on my 1992 Dodge W250 is we're going to be replacing the um, vacuum power brake booster. And I've, I already explained why I was having issues. But anyways, my brake pedal was getting stiff and uh, I diagnosed the problem and the problem is with the power brake booster, vacuum brake booster. So I'll show you where that is and how to replace it. All right, so we're just in the engine compartment here. We've got our master cylinder and then our power brake booster, vacuum assisted, um, just behind it. And through the firewall that connects to your brake pedal. So in order to replace the um, power brake booster, well, we can disconnect the master cylinder and not have to drain anything and just pull this out of the firewall um, once it's disconnected from your brake pedal and hopefully easily replace that. So I've already explained why I'm changing out my power brake booster. I've diagnosed the issue to be um, with the power brake booster. If you want to see a diagnosis of how to check your, your brakes and see if uh, there's an issue with your vacuum pump or your power brake booster, then um, go into my videos and check out um, another one of my videos that'll be on there showing you how to do that. All right, so our first step is we're gonna be removing the check valve and hoses from the check valve. Um, the new booster may come with a new check valve and seal. Here's your check valve and the seals just behind it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just remove everything so we can have access to the booster. All right, the next step is we're gonna be removing these two nuts that attach the master cylinder to the power booster. It's a 9 16 nut on each side. Um, and then we can pull, pull away the master cylinder from the booster. Okay, now with all the brake lines still attached, we can move the cylinder away from the brake booster. Okay, now just as a precaution, so we don't put too much pressure on uh, these brake lines, we'll just use some mechanics wire to tie up the master cylinder so it's out of the way and no pressure is being put on those lines. All right, so the next step, we're inside the cab now. Um, by the brake pedal, we're gonna have to take off this clip that attaches the back of the booster to the brake pedal. So we'll use a flathead screwdriver to wiggle that off, and then we'll be able to slide that rod off of the brake pedal. All right, in order to get that clip off, I just got a flathead screwdriver under there, pried up that little tab, and then now we can slide it back to get it right off. And now we can slide off our pedal. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is removing these four nuts on the cab side of the firewall that hold in the booster. There's one, two, three, oh, where's my hand? Three and then four up there. Four nuts. Um, these are, I believe, nine sixteenths. Um, so we'll take those four nuts off. Okay, we have all four bolts disconnected on the firewall side. And now we should be able to simply slide it out of the engine compartment. Be careful of your harness and whatever you've got running around it. And there we go. There's the old brake booster. 
So we've got a new one coming in um, tomorrow morning that we're gonna pick up. Uh, so far it seems to be pretty easy to take out and uh, install a new one. Uh, the new one should come with a new rod. Um, so yeah. All right, so uh, here's the new booster. I'm putting it in now. Just make sure not to get anything caught behind it. Get it lined up in the holes. And then it should slide right in. Now we can go in the cab and put those nuts on. All right, we're under the dash here. We have tightened all four of these nuts on the back of the brake booster. And also tightened back on, or put back on the uh, rod for the brake pedal and attach that clip securely. And at the same time, making sure that our uh, brake lights switch is working properly. Okay, we're back on the engine bay side. Um, we've hooked back up onto our check valve, the main vacuum hose, and then our uh, um, cruise control and other vacuum sensor hose, and also that sensor. I'm not sure what that sen sensor does, but we're gonna go ahead and put the master cylinder back on. Um, note that the new vacuum boosters should already come pre-adjusted for uh, push rod length on this side. Um, but you can double check uh, other videos online on how to do that. I'm not gonna show you. Okay, so we installed the uh, master cylinder back onto the brake booster. Um, double check that everything's connected and tighten down uh, the master cylinder bolts. And now we should be good to go for a test drive. Okay, so I just went for a test drive, um, testing out that new brake booster. Uh, everything seemed to work pretty well, uh, braking wise. Uh, it stopped, it seemed like it was doing its job, holding the vacuum. Um, the brakes were strong for uh, vacuum booster brakes. Um, the only issue was that I was noticing that under the braking conditions, it was pulling to the right a little bit. So I jacked up the truck and uh, checked wheel bearings and checked to see if the brakes were, the calipers were sticking at all and, it's, and it seemed to be okay. So um, maybe I'll rotate the tires in first and see if that's the issue. Um, but other than that, the, the brake booster issue is fixed. So we can move forward from here. So hopefully that helps if you're looking to replace your brake booster or if you are having uh, stiff brake braking problems. Um, thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more videos.